I want to speak a little bit this morning. I want to continue from last week. and uh, I want to talk about Jesus, the commander-in-chief. Jesus is the boss, amen? He is the commander-in-chief. He's, he's the victorious one. He's the one that has triumphed over the devil. He's the one that has given us victory. Do you believe that today? That no, Jesus, the commander-in-chief. Jesus, the king of glory. I want to read a few psalms to you this morning. In Psalm 24, verse 7, it says, Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Amen. You see, there's a way into the presence of God. There's a way into the victory. There's a way in that allows God to come in. He says in, in Revelation 3.20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you open the door, I will come in. I will dine with you. And then he goes on to say, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me upon my throne, even as I have overcome and am seated on my Father's throne. Amen. To he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So you see, there's a way in. There's a way in. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory will come in. You see, the King of glory wants to come into your life. The King of glory wants to fill you. He wants to empower you. He wants to give you victory. But there's a way in. If we just stand around and think, oh, well, praise the Lord. If God wants to, He can. No. If you're diligently, diligently, Seek Him. If you diligently go after Him, if you throw your hands in the air and start crying out to God, there's a way into the anointing. There's a way into the presence of God. There's a way in that will give you victory, will give you power. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. There's this word again, battle, warfare. See, there's a warfare that's being raged. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Strongholds. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and dominions and, and mights. There's a battle, there's a war going on, there's a war raging. The enemy is pouring out his fury and his wrath. He's doing whatever he can, and there are people there that are, that are being sucked in by it, people there that are being led by the enemy. But there's another group that are rising up. There's a bunch of people called the church. Amen? Give me a wave if you're part of the church. The church triumphant, the church victorious. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Don't let, don't let your head hang down. Lift up your head, hallelujah. Be strong today. Know that God before you who can be against you. Know that you, that is, you, you are already a conqueror. You are all, you've won, hallelujah, an amazing race. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift them up, your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. You know, in Psalm 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That means that there's no lack. You don't have to suffer lack. You suffer lack. You can just say, well, I'm, I'm, it's all over. I'm, I'm finished. You know, I'm no good. Or else you can say, hey, God. Let the weak say they are strong. Let the poor say I am rich. And you start to push through. You start to push into something. You start to break the shackles that, that bind you, you, the shackles that get around your life. Because the Lord says, and let me just read it again to you. It, it's an amazing thing. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures or else tender grasses into a tender place. He leads me beside the still waters, waters of rest, waters of peace. He restores my soul. He restores me. 
I don't know about you, but there's a restoration going on in the church. Do you believe that? There's a restoration going on in my life. There's a restoration going on in your life today. And God is starting to stir up, stir up the gifts on the inside. And they're going to bubble up. And out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit that had not yet been given. But he said, if you start crying out to me, if you start believing me, if you start putting your trust in me, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Amen. I tell you what, I've been around people that out of their innermost being doesn't flow living water, it flows death. They talk about the negativity, they talk about the failure, they talk about the defeat, they talk about the problems, they talk about the trouble, they talk about the coronavirus. Well, hallelujah, I want to tell you, God's building up another people that they're not allowing the negativity to flow out of them, but out of their innermost being is flowing rivers of living water, hallelujah, that my God is reigning, my God rules, hallelujah, glory. Hey, come on, that's, that's where the shout, that's where the clap. Because Jesus is alive, amen. Come on. He's alive, he's alive, he's alive. He's not dead. He is alive. He wears the victor's crown. Shakabundi. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Hallelujah. How many people know that God is with you? God is with me. Hallelujah. As Tom was saying, it doesn't matter about your pedigree. We're not going to buy a dog. <laughs> We're not looking for an animal. It doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done, how bad you've been. It means that I've been washed in the blood. Hallelujah. I've been washed. I've been washed. I've been washed. Hallelujah. I've been washed. I've been washed. I've been washed. Oh, hallelujah. As Tom said this morning, he loves me. Amen? Turn to somebody and say, he loves me. He loves me. See, you, you mightn't think you're loved. You mightn't think that he loves you, but he loves you. Oh, fear no evil, for you are with me. You're riding your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Yeah? I get a little bit excited about that because it's very, very real. He's very real to me. He's very, very real to me. What he says to me is very, very real. Jesus, the King of glory, wants to lead us and empower us. Hebrews 13 verse 5 says, He will never leave me nor forsake me. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. I will not fear what can man do to me. The Lord is, you know, he will never, ever leave me. He's my shepherd. He leads me. He guides me. And he says, I'll never, ever leave you nor forsake you. I don't know, friend, if ever you feel like you're on your own, if ever you, you know, the miseries get on you, you just got to start to build yourself up in the Spirit of God and you got to start quoting what God says. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to protect you. Your enemies, hallelujah, I'll destroy them before you. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Amen. It's time to start crying out to God. Call unto me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, glory. Amen. I tell you what, he's got a reservoir, a massive reservoir. Seen some of those you know, pictures you know, of, of some of the reservoirs that have been built overseas and, that, and, and, and they're monstrous. There, you just look at the reservoir and you look over the side and it looks like as if it just goes down kilometers. I don't know how far it is, but it's an awesome sight. And, the, and then you look behind you and there's this, this mass of water, just so much. And look, friend, in your mind's eye, you've got to have an imagination like me and, and, and others that I just see that damn wall being busted and, and there's an avalanche of water, living water, 
of victories, of promises, and life, and, and joy, and everything that, that God has that He wants to pour out upon you. Not a little trickle. Not like trying to milk a cow. Anybody here ever tried to milk a cow? And you just, and you, and nothing seems to happen? Ever had a tuba, tuba toothpaste? And you've got to the end? I've said this many times because it's so real to me and I've done it many times. And, and, and then you squeeze it and, it and you see this little bit pop out. By the time you get your brush, it's gone back in again. That is not the picture of God, amen. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And you see, when, you st when God starts to stir you and, you and you start rising up and you start quoting things and start saying things and, and doing things differently, that's when change comes about into our life, amen. From glory to glory, he's changing me, amen. Come on, come on. How many people here can say that? Come on, say it out loud. From glory to glory, he's changing me. Hallelujah. I'm part of this end time revival. I don't care how old I am or how young I am. I was young once. <laughs> it doesn't matter. What matters today is that I know because I know because I know that God is going to use us in this end time revival. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a new trust that's coming about. There's a new expectation that's starting to rise amongst the people. There's something fresh that's beginning to stir us. There's something there that's beginning to, to, to change us. It's changing us, amen. God, God is so good. God is so very, very good. God is good to me, amen. Jesus gathered 12 of his men and he worked with them and he trained them to carry the glory, to carry the good news, the gospel. He had these guys with him and, and they were working with him and he, was, and he was building them and showing them. But in Acts 1.4, it says that he commanded them. Why don't we just have a quick look at this in Acts chapter 1 verse 4. Acts chapter 1 verse 4. What an amazing... How many people love the book of Acts? And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from, the, from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise that the Father of the Father which he had said, you have heard of me. For being, I just better get my tongue back into my mouth. I get a bit excited and my tongue starts running away and I don't know where it's going. Half the time, but it's really good. <laughs> and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, who promised, the Father promised it, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, uh, is this the time you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said, it's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea, uh, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This is the final words that he's speaking to them. While he had spoken these things, they watched as he was taken, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Friend, th I'm not just talking about tiddlywinks or, or lullabies. This is so powerful. It was the last words that he spoke to his disciples. Don't go anywhere. Don't do anything until you've been endured with power from on high. How many people 
need the power of God. I need the power of God today. I need the anointing so bad. I, I need the victory of the cross. Don't go anywhere but wait for the promise. On the day of Pentecost, amazing day. What, a, what an amazing day. And look, what I'm doing this morning, I know you know these words. I know you know these things. But friend, I want to tell you the word of God is new every morning. There's something fresh every morning. There's something there that God just wants to breathe over us afresh, amen, to stir us, to rise, to get us going again, amen. Some people put on denka rub. <laughs> uh. The day of Pentecost, it says, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. I'm believing for the suddenlies, amen? I'm believing for a suddenly. I don't know when it's going to happen. It may happen this Tuesday night at the prayer meeting. It might happen next Sunday morning in the back room. It may happen, I don't know, but all I know is I'm looking for the suddenly, amen? I'm looking for that outpouring of the Spirit that's going to come like fire, like liquid fire, hallelujah. Yeah, Reinhard Bonnke said, Jesus baptized with water. But he's talked about, but when the Spirit of God comes, you'll be baptized in liquid fire. Liquid fire, hallelujah. There was a man that, that has actually seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people uh, give their life to Christ in Africa, different parts of the world, raised up so many, so many people. You've got to listen to somebody like that, amen? You need to listen to somebody like that. Book of Acts, and it's an amazing book. And there appeared unto them divided tongues of the fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Peter, amazing things. Over, it says there in, in Acts chapter 2 also, it says, And Peter, standing up uh, with the eleven, raised his voice and said, Men of Judea, and he, and he started to speak to them, and people got born again. Over here now is Peter, this man that was totally transformed, totally changed by the power of God. I, I don't know about you, but friend, that's what I want. I'm expecting for God to come in and totally change us uh, as, we, as we have a fresh mantle or a fresh, fresh uh, anointing, a fresh outpouring of the Spirit. Let me say it again, from glory to glory, He's changing us. We are being changed. We are being changed into His image, amen. We are being changed to be more like Christ. The enemy's come in and he's changed the church and tried to make it like natural people, like the world system. And it's gone astray and it's gone deep into negativity and, and goodness knows what else. But God is going to raise up His church. And it's going to come as a quickening outpouring of His Spirit. It's His church. And it's going to change us. Amen. Peter and John and the different ones that were there that, that had, had lived a, a life and with Jesus there, but now all of a sudden they've been endured with power from on high. And Peter in chapter, uh, Acts chapter 3, verse 6, what an amazing man this man is. Peter goes to the gate beautiful and he's been there all many, many times and there's a man that was crippled. I want to tell you, friends, you're, you're, this Holy Spirit power outpouring is going to change us so much that we won't be the same. You see, I believe and, and many times that Peter would have gone past that crippled man and he would have taken most of money out of his money bag and given him some money. But you see, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, we're going to be changed. We're not just going to be mere men and mere women that, that, that come to church and sing a few lullabies and, and, and do a few things like that. But somehow or other, that power of God is going to impact us so much. It's going to empower us. It's going to, it's going to change us. Amen. And we're going to walk out of the building totally changed. It may be in an upper room. It may be in your, in, your, in your quiet place. It may be somewhere. I don't care, and it doesn't matter where it happens. All I know is it's going to happen. Hallelujah. And just like Peter and John, who are our examples, 
Peter and John now go to the gate beautiful and there's this man that's been lame for years and they looked at, 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 at these guys, he said, and this is what he said, listen to this. And Peter said to this man, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Before that, uh, uh, fixing his eyes on him, Peter said, look at us. Friend, people are going to start looking at the church. And we're going we're gonna to want them to look at the church. Because we know that we've been changed, amen. I don't know, but I know that there's a change taking place. I can feel it. I can sense it, amen. I know that there's a change. I, I can, in my own life, in my own experience, just know that something's going on. And Peter walked in and said, look at me. Look at me. You can say, you arrogant person, you shouldn't say that. No, what he was just saying, you might know me like that. You might know me as a failure. You might know me as defeated. You might know me like that. But I want to tell you, look at me now. Hallelujah. Look at me now. Hallelujah. Look at me now. I'm changed. Hallelujah. I've been changed from glory to glory. He's changed me. Amen. I'm no longer a man being tossed around by every wind of doctrine. But now I know who I am and I know who I believe in and I know the power of his resurrection. And he said, look on us. And then he looked at him eyeball to eyeball and he said, silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Hallelujah. Peter knew that now he's a carrier of something. Carrying something powerful. We walk around sometimes like as if we're nobodies. And I'm a child of God. I've been filled with the power of God. I've got the Word of God that's sharper than any two-edged sword. We've got God who says, I'll never ever leave you, Neil, nor forsake you. Wherever you go, I'll go with you. Tom spoke about it. That, you know, Sometimes when somebody says something, God loves me. You think, oh, well, I know that. I know that. I know that. But do you know it? Do you know it? Do you really, really know it? Do you really know it? I spoke about my parrot many times. God loves you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Didn't help him one little bit when the cat ate him. But do you know? See, it's obvious there that, that you go through something there and all of a sudden the love of God gets around you. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, do you know what I mean? Have you been there? Have you been there lately? Have you been there somewhere where, where, where you know, you just go into God and, and all of a sudden His love just surrounds you and, 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 and then you look at somebody and say, God loves me. It's different to saying, God loves me. <laughs> but now it's a fresh revelation. Now it's a fresh reality. Now it's something that, that you say it with a different passion. You say it with a different reality. Because I know I don't deserve it. <laughs> but I know He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. He took Him by the right hand and lifted Him up and immediately His feet and His ankle bones received strength and He, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. I want to tell you, something's going to change that people are just going to start to walk and leap and praise their Lord. Amen. They're not just going to sit around like stuffed dummies. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He went walking and leaping and praising God. That's why I like to praise God. That's 
That's why I like it. Praise God. He has something on the inside of me. Kuka shakabundi. Starting to feel it a little bit now. See, his disciples, when they got touched, they, they were instantly changed. Now, no longer mere men, but they were changed by the Holy Spirit power into the destroyers of Satan's kingdom. Saul to Paul, how amazing. How amazing. One of the interesting things I believe about our lives is Jesus spoke in John 3, 7, and, and, he, and he said, you must be born again. You must be born again. And you know, again, that, that today, who wants to get born again? Okay, just go to the back and get a, get a cappuccino. <laughs> born again is more than, than just going through a little ritual. Born again is understanding my identification. My identification, I've been born again. You've been born again if you've received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you haven't, you need to get born again. If you've drifted away from God, you need to come back to Him. And you need to repent and you need to come and cry out to your God again. My identification is no, no longer with my natural father. Roy. It's no longer my identification anymore. But my Father, God, amen. My identification has to be with my Father, God. And my identification with this Savior is how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. That's why Jesus, he spoke these words, these words, how God anointed Jesus. Jesus stood in the midst and he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me. He understood what it was to be anointed. Jesus lived on planet Earth as a, as a man growing up. But the time came when he went to the Jordan and was baptized. And a voice came from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Amen. And he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He went from the Jordan into the wilderness where he was tempted. But the enemy tried to destroy him. But he knew what it was to be filled with the power of God. He knew what it was to be anointed by the, by the mighty hand of God. And so to his disciples, as, as he's been training them, and, and they had a lot of knowledge, they had a lot of testimonies and things that they saw, but he spoke to them and he said, don't go anywhere until you've been endured with power from on high. He knew what it, was meant, what it meant to be filled with the Holy Spirit and how much they needed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts 1 8 says, You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. See, God wants to demonstrate His power through you. You may not understand that because we've been lulled into, into churchified. We've been. What do you do to milk when you take the good stuff out? We've been pasteurized. <laughs> That's a good word, Pastor, that's true, pasteurized. Didn't think of that one before. We've been pasteurized. <laughs> Write that one down for me, please, Nancy. Now the good taken out of it. And now all you've got to do is just come to church, hallelujah, and sit there and be goody-goody two-shoes. Oh, and, and clap when I say clap. And 
And if I say something, yay, hey, brother. I've been trying to years to get you to do that. <laughs> We've been pasteurized, humidified. <laughs> now that's, what's that? What's that about? Homogenized. Homogenized. That's it. Yeah, homogenized. We've had the good taken out, but God's going to bring it back. Amen. How many people know that He won't let us go? He won't let us go. He's going to keep it up. He's going to keep us going. Uh, yeah, God wants to demonstrate. His power through you. Just like He did with Jesus, His disciples, and now it's you and me to show the world that He, Jesus, has destroyed Satan's work and has made a way of escape for mankind. You see, you might think I'm being a bit boastful. But I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new, still got the belly, still got skinny legs, still haven't got any teeth up top. But I'm a new creation. <laughs> I'm a brand new man, hallelujah. As, I, I, as a child, I did what I saw my father do. Smoked, drank a bit, swore a lot. But see, if you, if you get a fresh understanding, and I, I'm sorry if I just keep going back, Tom had a obviously a fresh something that... Cause him just to say, God loves me. And we've known that for years. But it was fresh. Fresh. And so now, you start talking about being born again, new cre cre creature. When, when you get something fresh about it, it becomes new to you. And so it means more to you, you know what I mean? You might have knew it in part, but now you know it a little bit more. And perhaps later on you might know it a little bit more, and a bit more, and a bit more, and a bit more, until, until Jesus comes. But until he comes, we'll be continually learning. But you get a fresh, fresh revelation and understanding why we needed the new birth. Born again. out of the kingdom of darkness and into a brand new kingdom, kingdom of light. Now I need to do what my new father does. I can do what my new father does. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father do and say what, I, what he says. Some people used to say, oh, you're just like your father. But now I've been born again. I want people to now say, Neil, you're just like your father. You're just like your dad. I've got a new father. I've got a brand new dad. Hallelujah. Amen. One that says, Neil, I'll never ever leave you nor forsake you. My other dad left me. He left me in Mount Isa. He went out drinking. I was eight years of age. I went looking for him in the pubs. Looking for him in the pool rooms. I went looking for him. I went looking for him because it was dark. And it was late. He'd been all gone all day and I was hungry and I was young and little and I didn't know where my dad was. Somebody got me in the back of the pool room and tried to molest me. But you see, I've got a new dad. He said, I'll never leave you, son. I'll never forsake you. 
I'm, I'm with you always. My new dad now has come unto me. <laughs> come to me and I'll answer you. I'll help you. You give me a whole book of stuff here that if I can only believe it, it'll change my life. Jesus said in the, in the book of John 14, 12, it says, these things that I do, you can do also. And even greater things than this can you do because I go to my Father. Acts 10, 38, I've already quoted this, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Now, God wants to anoint you. He wants to anoint Nance. He wants to anoint Deb. He wants to anoint Jack. He wants to anoint Crystal. He wants to anoint you. And it's going to read like this. How God anointed you from the Sunshine Coast with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with you. God wants us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Jesus returned from the wilderness in the power of the Spirit. He said in Luke 4, 18, He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus didn't say, after that encounter, God has anointed me to do all these things. He didn't say, if it be thy will, send someone that needs to be delivered to me just while I wait here. He went about doing good, healing all who are oppressed of the devil. I've just got past my introduction here. Hallelujah. Oh, Father. I've got a new dad. One that will never ever leave me nor forsake me. And I believe that he's calling us. And it doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian. Sometimes we say been in the way. Sometimes it's us that's been in the way. Because we don't respond. We, we don't allow or we don't open the door. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If you open the door, I will come in. I'll come into you. I, I, I want to be, I want to dine with you. I want to fellowship with you. I want to be your God. I want you to be my people. I want to, I want to lead you. I want to take you by the still waters. I want to, I, I, there'll be no lack in your life. There'll be no this, no that. But you see, if we don't go, or if we don't respond, you don't go anywhere. My mate here, I pick on him a little bit. But you see, when the Spirit of God comes, the Spirit of God speaks to us. And we were talking the other Sunday about surrender. A brother came to me at the end of the meeting and he said, Neil, he said, during the meeting, he said, I just felt like getting up off my seat and walking out the front and kneeling and throwing my hands in the air and crying out, I surrender. You see, see that's God. That's God in the house. But see, what happens many times is, is, is he's not been... <laughs> <laughs> you're not a churchy fied fellow, this bloke. You don't know much about how you do things and what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do or anything like that. But there's fear of man and there's stuff in there that says, oh, I, I can't do that. But you see, what we've got to do is we've got to be released that we can do that. That's what's going to bring the glory. That's what's going to bring the presence of God. When we can come and kneel in the presence of God, when we come and cry out, God, I surrender. Not my will, but thine be done. And he comes and he meets with us. He would have met with him anyhow because he's a young Christian. 
God would have met with him, but some of us, I'm going to say it like this, dry wood. <laughs> i tell you what, dry wood burns good. Get the fire of God around our lives, amen. Surrender again, surrender afresh. Let the Spirit of God get around us. Let the anointing get around us. Let the power of God get around us. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me right now. I'm going to ask you today, uh, if you don't know Christ, you don't know Jesus as Lord of your life, you need to surrender. You really need to surrender to Him. It's not a little churchy thing that we do, but it's something that you do. It's not something that we do in mass because others are doing it. You can't have a cesarean birth. You've got to be born naturally by the Spirit of God. And you just say, God, I, I want you. I, I surrender. You may be somebody here today and you, you sort of drifted away from God a bit or you know you, you know you need to come back anyhow. I don't need to tell you what you need. You already know because the Spirit of God would be speaking to you. You need to say, God, would you come again and afresh on my life? I need you, Jesus. Today, if you're in this place and you know you need to surrender, you know you just say, God, I don't want to do my own thing. I've been doing my own thing as a Christian for so long. I want to do your thing. I surrender to your will. If you like that this morning, would you just quickly slip up your hand? Not to kneel, but bless your honey at the back. Anybody else quickly? Just slip it up. Slip it up. Come on. I want to just let me see it. Give me a wave. Bless you. Anybody else? Quickly. Anybody else? Quickly. Slip it up. Slip it up. Slip it up right now. Right now. Those ones that have raised your hand, I wonder if you just quickly stand to your feet. Would you stand to your feet? I want you to just come out the front here. Come on. Just come out the front. It's okay. I won't bite you, I promise. Come on, sweetie. Come on. <laughs> so I went on the corner there. Come on, darling. Don't you? Come on. Good day. There's others. Let's all stand to our feet. 